everyone. Uh, Steven Casana here from Taizen Shakuhachi. Um, this is going to be another installment of uh, Notes from Japan. Uh, okay, so this lesson is taking place on November 9th of 1999 and, uh, when I was studying with Ishikawa Sensei in Osaka. Um, on this lesson, it looks like I was studying Tamuke and I was also reviewing Honshirabe. So as for Tamuke, uh, the first thing he says is that my image of the piece is okay, but I need a bigger sound. So you're going to hear this as a recurring theme. In other words, my overall approach was kind of tight, and um, when that happens, your, your sound could get a little bit weak, or uh, it's not just this open round sound that we're looking for in the Yokoyama style. Um, uh, the next note I make is my sound is better during practice sessions, but in performance or in lessons it dies. And this is common with my students um, in person and online. Uh, it's just, uh, you, it's difficult. It's a very difficult instrument. And if you have any sort of tension, whether it's physical or mental, it will affect what's happening on the instrument itself. So, and it also happens with my piano students too. Like, oh, I played this piece at home, it was perfect. Well, no one was staring at you at home. So part of this uh, practice of music making with the shakuhachi is um, getting so in tune and so in touch and, and so focused on what you're doing, it doesn't matter what is happening around you. So our, our goal is whether you're playing it for yourself playing it for your teacher or playing it for 500 people, um, your center and your core is stable and you're able to maintain your focus and um, do what you've been training to do. Very easy to say, extremely hard to do. So the way to get better at that is through practice and not just practicing your pieces but actually practicing performing your pieces. So once you get your piece to a certain level then it's time to start sharing it. And it's only through the practice of performing that piece under pressure where you develop that confidence and um, are in tune with yourself to try to maintain your relaxation and openness as, you, as you're performing. So in a way, I always kind of relate this to, um, in a way, the samurai training. Um, you, you practice your kata and all these other movements uh, but the real test is when you're in battle. <laughs> and for musicians, our, our kind of our battle is actually the performance part of it. So when you hear really high level playing um, in a live performance, is that person has practiced really hard in the practice room, but they also have a lot of experience and uh, practice performing for people too. So you have to practice two ways. Work as hard as you can, in the practice room and then also perform as often as you can to develop that confidence and skill skill level. Um, while playing each note, the lips should be make slight adjustments to find the center of the tone. So this is one of the things Ishikawa Sensei always talked about is there's always subtle adjustments as we're, we're playing. Um, and you always want to try to capture that center of the tone. So that's going to be a consistent theme too. Um, now the other thing that he had me do, and this is part of the process I was just talking about, was on this lesson, we had our lesson, we did Tamake, and then he basically said, all right, Steve, now play uh, Honshirabe for everyone as a performance. So here Ishikawa Sensei was again, uh, taking a piece that I've practiced and I worked hard and now I had to present it to everyone that was watching because remember lessons in Japan during this time you didn't have a one-on-one -on -one lesson it was one-on-one -on -one, but there were other people in the room the other students in the room so it's a really just a, a, a great way of teaching because you get your experience with the teacher but you also get to practice performing too so you kind of uh, getting both experiences in, in one session so that's what he had me do. And, and um, I always felt like that when I was in Japan. I always felt like I was on call. I could never be quite relaxed. He, he would just, since they would just randomly call on me to play for people. Uh, I'll tell you one story. 
um, I was in a, a workshop in BC, Japan, with the Shikawa Sensei, and maybe about 20 or so of his students, and we're in Okayama, BC, and at the big workshop, and we're in this big tatami room, and then all of a sudden these two older gentlemen walk in the room, and things got like kind of serious and formal. Everyone sat seiza. Um, these two men walked into the room, introduced themselves to Ishikawa Sensei, and uh, there was a lot of bowing going on. And then next thing you hear, Steve San, please play. <laughs> Just randomly. So I had to get up in front of these two gentlemen. I'm assuming they were kind of high level Shakuachi players, maybe outside of Yokoyama style, maybe Tozandu or something. Um, I, I, I didn't know who they were. Um, but I was just like expected to perform. Bam. No notice, no like anything. It was just like, Steve, here we go. <laughs> like, height. <hi. laughs> so I had to get up and I played, I think I actually played Tamuke for, uh, for them that day. And um, you were just, you were just, you had to be ready. That, that's the way it was. But it makes you a stronger performer, even though it could really kind of rattle you. <laughs> so that's what I mean. I mean, practice, 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 and then take it to the next level and then practice performing your stuff. Okay? Share it with people. Film yourself. That's another good way. As soon as you turn on the camera, boy, things feel a little bit different when you're playing. Um, so there's lots of different ways that you can practice performing. Um, and it's not just for the sake of performing. Um, it's for the sake of can you maintain your center under a little bit of pressure? Because I feel like shakuhachi is not just about making high-level music making, but it's basically uh, training you for life, you know? Things are going to happen. There's going to be health issues. There might be money issues. Can you maintain your focus and your center? That's, that's my practice with this instrument. Um, so anyway, that was a lesson I took from that lesson. This again was on November 9th, 1999 with Ishikawa Sensei. All right. I hope you enjoyed listening. Take care, everyone. Bye-bye.